Guggenlab.com. All right, guys, welcome back to the Guggen Lab channel. We're hanging out today talking a little baits. You know, in this series, we've talked about some of the new baits, one being the Love Grub right here. We talked about my favorite way of fishing them, which is on a swim jig. We're also going to talk about some other things that you can do to kind of broaden the horizon with the Love Grub. Let's get into it. You know, over the years, I've experimented with lots of different baits and using them kind of the non-traditional ways or maybe, maybe how they were first intended to be used. You know, like a swim bait, for example, small swim bait. I've actually put them on drop shots and caught a lot of fish, and that's another way of fishing a swim bait, on a drop shot, which a lot of people kind of don't think about. Another thing is taking this Love Grub, which is the perfect size, especially here in Florida. They like the smaller, compact flipping baits. It's got two, two tails on the back, which give a lot of action. Rigging that thing up, flipping. That's right, punching. That's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you how this right here can be a great little alternative Totally different action you know I've, you see me fish the nuke punch a lot you see me flip the bandito bug but this right here is a thinner bait a lot of action so as I yo-yo it up and down in that mat or in those cattails those legs are gonna really kick so again it's the perfect size All right that's a regular 5 aught heavy wire hook look at that it sits in there perfect guys look at that that you look at that and you say oh yeah that looks juicy because it is all right, let's, uh, let's go flip and see what happens. All right, we're in this little central Florida lake. The water's high, we've had a hurricane come through. A lot of stuff is flooded. You can look at these trees in the background here. And that's all three and four feet of water uh, in these trees. So we're gonna treat these trees like, like mats. Straight braid, one ounce weight, big heavy wire hook. Get you in there, let me get to the bottom. Oh, there he is. That didn't take long. Oh, gosh. What? On cue, baby. God. Lee. Dang. I think it was a good one, too. There's got to be another one in there. How did I miss him? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But that fish bit it. After the third time, I lifted it up. Maybe second or third time, I lifted it up. And that's because those legs are going like this, up and down. Again, a pretty unique action. Another thing I like about this bait, and, and I, haven't, I haven't done this a bunch with this bait, okay? This is, I'm kind of experimenting along with you guys on this deal, but I know it'll work. What I like about it initially is the action. The second thing I like about it is how slender that is, okay? That is gonna penetrate through the grass mats a lot easier than a big, fat, wide, bulky bait. So sometimes, you know, tournament mode, you're fishing, you, you're just trying to get through, most, most importantly. This slender bait is gonna get through and it's got all the action. Now, the other thing I like to do when I flip, I want, I want you to pay attention to where I put my rod. Let me show you what I don't do. I don't flip it out there and drop my rod, pull some line out, move my rod around, put it in gear, lift up, and check to see if there's a fish. Absolutely the wrong way of doing it. What I do is I keep everything in a fixed position. That way I can feel the bite. I'm gonna flip it in the mat or the bush or whatever. Look, my rod is fixed position. My line is going off my thumb right there. It went to the bottom. I'm in, oh, right there he is. Right like that, guys. He's in that bush. Oh, two in a row. <laughs> God. We're trying to film a fishing tip, guys. What's wrong with these things? Dude, that's crazy. Oh it, you just like thunk. They're in that tree right there, dude. We're gonna catch one in there, I promise. I think so. What I was trying to show you there when I got really interrupted by that fish biting was that my rod was in in a in a in a in a fish strike position. I was in a strike position, my, my rod was up, my line was taut, I could feel a bite, which I did, and, and I was ready. Instead of like dropping your rod down, pulling line off, doing all that, and then lift it up and feeling one on there and being surprised by the bite. When I flip, I keep my rod in a fixed position. Fixed position. I'm not moving my tip around at all. Bait went to the bottom. It's on the bottom now because I felt it pulling off my thumb. Stroke it up. Let it sink down. Stroke it up. Let it sink down. Sometimes people, they don't quite understand what a bait's supposed to do once it goes in that mat. I like it to go all the way to the bottom and then I pull it back up almost to the top. Not necessarily all the way to the top, but at least three quarters of the way up, 
half to three quarters of the way up and let it fall back down. And I'll stroke it maybe three times in a spot if there's good weather, like we're not, we're not cold right now. The fish should be pretty aggressive. Two to three times, I'm gonna reel it in real fast and I'm gonna make another flip somewhere close. You know, when you're flipping like this, these bass aren't necessarily biting this bait because they're in there hunting. They're in there just kind of chilling. A lot of times bass are just, they're hemmed up in this thick stuff, just relaxing. You kind of, you're kind of throwing the meat right in their little living room. And so they bite it out of a reaction or out of an opportunity, but they're not gonna swim. I don't think they swim 10 feet over from the other side of that to eat my love grub right there. I think, I think you've got to be pretty close to them within three feet or so. And so when I'm picking apart a place like this, I'm just looking for the highest percentage spots. Little mats, little canopies, little places where the wind's hitting it. Finally got one of these dudes out of here. That's one reason you throw braid and heavy rods and a big hook. There we go. It's kind of kind of crazy. It had all those bites in this in that tree behind us, but it seems like that flooded timber it's got a decent amount of fish, and we're sitting right here next to it. And looking at the guy got him to bite. And you can tell how dark that fish is. He hasn't been out. So, guys, thanks for hanging out with me on the Guggen lab channel so be sure to subscribe check out more videos coming your way i'll have a bunch more stuff coming as well we'll see you guys